It is sometime in April. I'm Chris and this is Curiously Polar. <laughs> yeah, still being very deliberately um, um, vague, Im imprecise in the date because <laughs> whenever this is coming out, we, yeah, we're still uh, fighting the uh, availability of personnel. <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> Um, anyway, here we are again. I'm Chris. This is Henry. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Um, doing fine. I didn't have enough sleep last night, but that's oh, entirely same, same my here. own fault. So, <laughs> uh, so we are um, back with another episode of Curiously Polar um, with another short news reel and another main topic. The main topic is about, well, Easter. So um, this will be out a couple of weeks after Easter. So it's not quite as timely, but timely enough. Um, Okay, but let's let's dive. We still don't have a jingle for the Polar <laughs> News Reel. We have to the change that. I think we're saying that for a year no. now. <laughs> well, maybe maybe someone in the audience is good at making jingles. <laughs> let's find out. Um, so here is the Polar News Reel with the first topic. Um, oh, my favorite ship. We've talked about this one in the past. <laughs> Barons Observer here, they have a... They have a picture of this Russian North Pole platform. The you 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 lovingly called it the egg. Yeah, it looks like an egg, certainly, and it, uh, does, yeah. it, it fits Easter perfectly. That's the Russian Easter egg. <laughs> That's why you chose it. It's the Easter ship. Uh, <laughs> so this is the official uh, Easter episode. Um, so this is this is the ship for those who are only listening and not watching. This is the ship with the unusual form. The 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 bow is round like an egg, and it, yeah, it's even painted like an Easter egg. <laughs> sort of. I'm I'm not sure if that's the final livery, but um the the shape of the of the ship is a little bit like um offshore supply vessels uh, on the bow. So it's really round. It tries to um to to emphasize its role, its future role in the sea ice, being locked in the sea ice and not damaging the hull and staying and drifting with the ice for two years and longer. So the entire um, hull is extremely round, no edges at all, and that's just a very odd uh, design. So, so it looks so really it, it like, gets, an, like a floating egg. It, it gets pushed up by the ice as opposed to being squashed. Exactly. You remember the story of uh, Friedrich Nansen uh, oh, and yeah. the Fram, yes. where he built the Fram deliberately to, to lock it in the ice. So the, the bow of the Fram so, was already changed uh, for that purpose, and that's where the Russians have picked it up and just... Um, yeah, developed it even further. So did, did the Fram also look like an egg? Not quite. No, not quite, no. Um, but the interesting thing is we, we talked about that Easter egg, or, or that ship, um, in one of our previous episodes last year, um, I think also in a, in a, a news reel, where that was announced and um, the keel laying and they started working on it. Now the ship is almost done. So we are uh, talking about 90% uh, of the shipbuilding process is finished and now it's like the fine uh, tuning. Um, and then end of the year in autumn, the ship is due to do its first expedition, which the uh, Russian Minister of uh, Natural Resources tries to tell it's not an expedition. It's more like a sea trial, an ice trial, if you like. Um, so the ship is going to be into the uh, into the ice uh, and will drift a little bit and then uh, it returns to port to um, see whatever needs to be done. And then the first real expedition will happen then in uh, 2023 uh, when the ship, which is uh, called uh, Severny Polios, uh, which north, means North Pole, um, heads into the Arctic for a two-year-long expedition. And that's pretty... Uh, pretty nice to see that this project is um, proceeding with all connected difficulties we currently have um, internationally uh, with regards to Russia. But this is a, a project that picks up the uh, drift ice stations, which we also talked about in previous episodes, um, and makes it more... Um, comfortable to do that research but also gives uh, the chance to actually get more material on board of the vessel more uh, research instruments and so on and so forth so that's really a game changer for arctic research so they are also um, going to look at uh, sea ice and we have uh, another topic here about the sea ice concentration which kind of links into that a bit doesn't it 
Very much, yeah. And and that's just a very recent um, uh, chart from April 17th um, that shows the the Bering Strait in the northern Bering Sea. And it uh, shows the ice uh, sea ice concentration. And um, if you hop oh, over to new, YouTube... The newer one is on top and the older one from last year it, is on the bottom. Or oh, quite a change. Exactly. And and if you're listening to the, to the podcast, I, I highly recommend hopping over to YouTube so you get a, a glimpse of that uh, picture. Um, it looks a little bit... So it needs to, be, needs to be explained a little bit. So we have the newer uh, picture from uh, this year, from April 17th, 2022, on the top, and a previ the previous year, 2021, same day uh, at the bottom. The grey coloured areas are the land masses on the left side. You have Chukchi Peninsula, um, so that's Russia, and on the right side you have Seward Peninsula and uh, Alaska in general. Uh, in the middle, that's the Bering Strait, and then uh, at the bottom you see Bering Sea, the northern part of the Bering Sea. And you see different colours. You see the dark blue at the bottom, that's open ocean. And then you have different colours, a lot of purple and pink. Um, that's a sea ice concentration between um, 85, 90 and 100%. And then you have um, some smaller patches with green, red, orange and so on. And the more it turns from orange to yellow to green, uh, lighter green to blue, the less sea ice we have in the area. And... What causes um, this alarm with this tweet was really um, the difference between April 17, 2021, where the yeah the vast majority of the area of the Bering uh, Strait, but also the northern Bering Sea, is purple and pink, with a small exception of the north of uh, St. Uh, Matthew Island, where you have some open waters, and um, a bit, bit north of Point Hope. But then in 2022, so a few years back, a few years day, a few days back, we actually have open water in the northern Bering Sea almost all the way to Nome. That's just really something on the north um, eastern part of the Bering Sea that looks very very um, dangerous, it's very worrying. Um, but not only there. So there, there we have a humongous uh, stretch of completely open water. And then we have a very patchy area on the southern part of the Chukchi Sea, um, of the Chukchi Peninsula, where you have a lot of bigger spots that are open. So that's really something um, that's different. And now come the critics and say, yeah, but that's just one day and it's just one year difference. That's entirely true, but it supports the pattern we observe over the years. And what we see so, here is very clear a trend. So this is not just an outlier. This is a, no. a continuation of what has been going on. Unfortunately, it is, yes. And we have an, an, another graph from uh, University of Bremen, which is uh, one of the leading institutions in sea ice um, measuring. And... Here we have the, the land masses in green with uh, St. Uh, Matthew Island in the middle of the Bering Strait. And uh, the, the white is the sea ice, the white greyish, and the blue is open water. And you can see the open water, particularly the Chukchi Peninsula. Even South clearer the Chukchi this Peninsula, one. It's, wow. Yeah, it's, it's open. It's open water between Chukchi Peninsula and St. Matthews. Then you have a bit of ice um, on the east of uh, St. Matthews. And then the east, northeastern Bering, uh, Bering Sea is open all the way to Nome. So that the whole bay is open, open water. And even further north, uh, north, um, just like above the Bering Strait, we have yeah, even open there, water there's again. open water now. Yes. Quite worrying. <sighs> okay. Hmm. All right. How how do we how do we manage to uh, lead into our main topic of the day after this newsreel? Well, the sea ice um, is, is very important for um, for the locals, for indigenous people, as they use it for hunting, for um, for for bridging the gap, if you like, uh, to to other territories, and that brings us to one of the most remote uh, villages in the world, um, certainly one of the most remote villages in Greenland, and that is. Um, you want to pronounce it? Yeah, that is it. <laughs> Itokortor meat. Very well, very well. Nice. That, that was that was the slow version. How how does the fast version sound? Itokortor meat. There you go. That was pretty close. <laughs> it's 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 beautiful. Um, we have a we have it, a map here. We have a map here. There's some some <laughs> photos. 
let me let me scroll down here is uh, the map on the screen that is remote yes <coughs> so it's in an east greenland it's uh in at the opening of scoresby sound the old uh non-native or non-indigenous name was scoresby sound um and it's a tiny place it's 345 people living there there are no roads there's no connection to that place for six seven months a year sometimes longer uh, when the sea ice around uh, scorers Bay sound east greenland is frozen and that is very very often much longer than in other parts of the world as we have the strong uh, east greenland current bringing the ice down from the north pole through from Strait, and then down uh, to scorers Bay sound so it's very interesting um to read about an easter festival easter celebration in that village and the tradition goes back 15 years uh, has been introduced by um a danish um chess club so um uh, not a danish uh, icelandic chess club sorry um so the icelandic chess player um Hrap, oh god what's his name Hrap Jökulsson, um brought a chess club over to, to visit the village uh, 15 years ago and introduced um, chess to the children there. And that was very well received. And since then, he came back every year just with a break after the pandemic. And why is it worth a note? For a couple of reasons. But one reason is it's the first after that pandemic. It's in the middle of uh, end of, of winter, beginning of spring. So it still is quite difficult to go there. And it is quite um, an event in that small, tiny village. It's a mix of performance art, circus, visual arts, um, but also chess. So chess plays a, a big, big role in that um, uh, tradition. And that makes Itokotomit the leading chess place in Greenland. And that's uh, pretty awesome for a small village of just 345 people. And you know what? The church bells going off right behind you is very, very <laughs> fitting to this topic, to be honest. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> this is an interesting festival. This is, I, I like this. Well, ju just in, in general, the idea of this being uh, chess uh, driven pretty much. Um, and then spring being an important time because that's when you can go there again or start beginning go there. So it's, it's a kind of a re emergence of of things and that yeah people are coming out of their here. winter uh hibernation um yes. and and the aim is really to to make the the particular the kids and the younger uh people happy and uh it includes obviously uh, every other res resident of the area of the village as well but it's it's really aimed at the at the kids to introduce them to chess to ease their minds with a little bit of performance here and uh, some circus performance there. Um, it's really, really nice to see and it's very well received. So the kids are really uh, looking forward for that. And after a two years break, um, that was really, really something. So I'm, I'm really happy that happened. Awesome. So with that and the church bells, Henry's personal church bells were around the corner, um, we come to the end of this episode. Um, thanks everyone for being subscribed. If you're not subscribed, you should. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a button there for you to subscribe. Um, make sure you click that. Make sure you leave us a like. And if you're not subscribed in your podcast player, then do that too, because this is really going to help us be visible a bit more. We will be back soon with more. Until then, everyone, take care and bye bye.